Hi there. Thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, part two, I will discuss further on skin tones, the hair, and a look at the clothes and background. So be sure to watch it right through to the end because here and there I'll slow the footage right down so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, so here we are where we uh, left off on part one. So continue now with the hair. I'm just blocking in first, so what I basically do is just get the structure, get the feel of it. Not worry too much about details, just getting a feel where things go. Just using the, like a burnt umber colour and a black and white really, just to get the basic shape. So what I tend to do is I don't worry about getting the colours correct at the beginning. I always try and draw out with the white and uh, sort of map it out because this white will shine through the colour what I put on the top which makes the hair glisten then as well. So I'm just using the white, shaping the area. Best approach as well is to actually open up and sense the whole image while you're doing the hair because you don't really want to get a tunnel vision on just doing loads of detail because then the hair becomes a separate then. It all has to merge into one. I mean, there's still the energy of the person shining through the hair as well. So just relax and let it happen. Just open the heart and let go of the mind. Quiet the mind by focusing your awareness onto your heart. Keep open and sense the energy of the person while you're drawing and try and draw the energy rather than detail. I always find that the details just take care of themselves, they just appear. It's just focusing your awareness on how that person feels and just let go and just let it all happen. Right, with the approach to the skin tone, I tend to just do the basic colours first underneath using red, blue and yellow, which is the primary colours. Uh, and then to tone a red down, I'm using the green, which is the complementary colour. So to desaturate a colour, you use the opposite. So if that was an orange colour, to desaturate that, you'd use a blue. So basically, I'm just doing that first, just going through roughly sensing again the energy just getting the shapes right not worrying about the detail too much and then just let it develop at this stage now for the rich colors the candy ash ones i use uh, a list of these materials and all the single numbers are in the description below so you can just buy the single pencils rather than buying a whole set so that will help out so be sure to check that out at the end of the video basically the colors are actually a mixture of what i normally use anyway which is the yellow ochre a warm red and a blue so the, what the, what it is tend to be is a yellow ochre with white which is a light yellow ochre medium yellow ochre and the yellow ochre with a little bit of red in it so what i'm tending to use now is using those pencils rather than mixing it on the actual board so it's a quicker way to do it and with this image being quite rich anyway it's easier to do it this way then to get the correct subtlety of color i'm going over them with the red blue and yellow as well so it still works out the same it's just a quick way of doing it Now for the deep shadow in there, I'm using uh, brown as well in the mix and also desaturating that red with green, you can see me using there. So but sometimes you have to use that brown just to get that little bit more denser shadow. And uh, just, you, you just mix a bit of red in with it as well, that helps.
The beard is a similar procedure to the hair, obviously it's still hair. So mapping out with the white first and then going over with them with the colours. And then to get that highlighted colour I'm using those rich Karen Diash um, yellow ochre type pencils to actually get that shimmery effect and then glaze over the top then with the Carbothellos or the Contia Paris pencils so because they are chalkier one and the glaze a lot easier and the, what's great about the Karen Ash pencils it is quite rich and it sort of sticks to the actual pastel mat and it don't move so when you make a mark it don't move so it makes it really good to glaze over the top with those If you find value in this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Now here you can see how I'm using the rich colours underneath, which um, really gives that vibrance to the skin tone and what I'm doing with that is making texture as well so I'm not I'm moving in all different directions little circles little dots so it creates this like a texture so when you glaze over the top this texture then actually shines through so it's a really good idea to do that because skin is never smooth Now for the clothes, I'm using pencils that are very similar to what the image is. So just blocking in the, <coughs> the shapes of those. Just getting the pigment down, getting a feel for where things are. I'm not worried about the colour being exact at the moment, it's just blocking in. Now if there's an area which has got the same colour, always put that in at the same time. Don't just work on one area then go to another one later because you might forget what layers you've used, what different colours you've used to get that, that um, texture and what have you. Another thing to bear in mind as well when you're doing clothes, like any other part of your picture what you're doing, there's always energy that is coming through that. There's the person's energy shining through the clothes. It might sound a bit hippie and a bit weird, but there is a tendency to, there's a feeling there and you have to sort of try and capture that. I find clothes very fascinating to draw actually because there's this textures uh, and sometimes you can get overwhelmed by it if you're not careful but again you use the same procedures like I do with anything else is just relax the mind and just open the heart and just feel the texture just feel at what it feels like um, and then just let go and you t you'll you'll find that these textures just happen. Your your hands will just move in a certain directions and certain ways, and and it's a strange feeling. But you you've not got no control over that really. It just happens. It seems to just happen, and I get the marks just move into like squirrels, um, dashes, all sorts of different marks. But I'm not sort of trying to make the marks then marks are just happening through me as I'm looking I'm it's, it's a sense that it just flows through me and it makes those marks that needs to be made it's it's uh, it's quite interesting really to, to absolutely actually observe um, yeah so just let go and just let these marks happen and you'll find that it will because clothes can be quite overwhelming uh, you think of all that 
texture and, and trying to get it to feel right. Um, so yeah, just like anything else, just, just relax and just let it happen. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends? I'd really appreciate that because that would really help the channel to grow. Now in the description below I have actually listed all the pencils I use, the single pencils and what sort of primary colours I use and secondary colours, but I always suggest if you can afford it is to buy the complete set because like I'm using here these colours are really handy and if they're very close to actually what you, you want in it just makes it so much easier to make the texture then. So I'd really recommend buying sets. I've got links um, in the description below of all the sets I use, so please check that out after you've watched the video. Now for the background I wanted to create a aura around Jesus, uh, as though somebody has actually uh, prayed to him and he's, a, he's actually appeared to them. Uh, so I wanted to put a gold aura around that, rather than just what was on the reference image. So I found a few images of auras and played about with different ideas. Now for the purple I've used a, a violet blue uh, which is in the range of the Rembrandt sticks and they've got three different tonal values there which really came in handy. And what's great about the Rembrandt is they're very soft so they're very easy to blend in. Now. I used a lemon yellow round for the aura and then over the top of that lemon yellow I've put burnt sienna which creates a nice gold. Now I didn't want it too brown of a gold, too rich, I wanted it sort of still to be light enough so it mixes well with the purple because the purple or the violet, the complementary colour to that would be yellow so uh, it mixed really nice with that combination. Is the finished portrait at the correct angle so you can see it as I saw it rather than on the easel which was in perspective. Thank you for watching the video right through to the end. If you found value in it and you like the video please give it a thumbs up, appreciate it, it would help the channel. Leave a comment and a message in the comments below, uh, let me know what sort of videos you want me to produce. I've actually left a couple of links here for you to uh, click on and to subscribe click on the circle here. It's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Thank you so much, take care and be well.